Chapter six, I-C-A-N-R-E-A-D. How do you do it? Why, every child knows the answer. You spell out the words. Yes, all right, but what exactly do you mean? Well, there's an I which makes an I sound, and then there's a C, an A, and an N which spells can, and so on. And with 26 letters, you can write down anything? Yes, anything. In any language? Mm, well, just about. Isn't that amazing? With 26 simple signs, each no more than a couple of squiggles, you can write down anything you like, be it wise or silly, angelic or wicked. It wasn't anything like as easy for the ancient Egyptians with their hieroglyphs, nor was it for the people who used the cuneiform script, for they kept on inventing new signs that didn't stand for just single letter sounds, but for whole syllables or more. The idea that each sign might represent one sound and that just 26 of those signs were all you needed to write every conceivable word was a wholly new invention, one that can only have been made by people who did a lot of writing. Not just sacred texts and songs, but all sorts of letters, contracts, and receipts. These inventors were merchants, men who traveled far and wide across the seas, bartering and trading in every land. They lived quite near the Jews in the ports of Tyre and Sidon, cities much larger and more powerful than Jerusalem, and quite as noisy and bustling as Babylon. And in fact, their language and their religion were not unlike those of the peoples of Mesopotamia, though they didn't share their love of war. The Phoenicians, for this was the name of the people of Tyre and Sidon, made their conquests by other means. They sailed across the seas to unknown shores, where they landed and set up trading posts. The wild tribes living there brought them furs and precious stones in exchange for tools, cooking pots, and colored cloth. For Phoenician craftsmanship was known throughout the world. Indeed, their artisans had even helped in the construction of Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. Most popular of all their goods was their dyed cloth, especially the purple, which they sold throughout the world. Many Phoenicians stayed in their trading posts on foreign shores and built towns. Everywhere they went, they were welcomed, in Africa, Spain, and in southern Italy, on account of the beautiful things they brought. Nor did they ever feel cut off from home, because they could write letters to their friends in Tyre and Sidon, uh, using the wonderfully simple script they had invented, which we still use today. It's true. Take this B, for example. It is almost identical to the one used by the ancient Phoenicians 3,000 years ago when they wrote home from distant shores, sending news to their families in those noisy, bustling harbor towns. Now you know this, so you'll be sure not to forget the Phoenicians. <laughs> <laughs>